Ballon d'Or, an annual most prestigious individual awards in football, given out by France Football Magazine, honoring the best player in the world each year. It is one of the oldest and the most prestigious individual award in world football. It has been handed out yearly since 1956. However, like any subjective accolade, it is not immune to controversy and debate. Throughout the years, there have been instances where players, despite their remarkable performances, were overshadowed by the eventual winners. In this video, we shed light on some of those players who arguably deserved the Ballon d'Or equally, if not more, than the actual recipients. Here are the top robberies in Ballon d'Or history. Do subscribe to the channel, click on the notifications for video like this weekly. Liverpool's 21-year-old Englishman Michael Owen won the Ballon d'Or in 2001. His 31 goals in the calendar year that clinched five titles for Liverpool, not the Premier League or UCL, and inspired performances against Germany for England, against Roma in the UEL and Arsenal FA Cup final, were enough to pip him ahead of a list of superstars, including Real Madrid's Spanish talisman Raul González. Raul was never really the best player in the world, but if he ever had to win the award, it was in 2001. He claimed the golden boot in La Liga and Champions League, winning both competitions with Madrid. He was prolific in league and cups for a star-studded Madrid side, and the votes getting divided for Madrid's success between him, Zidane and Figo was one of the other reasons why he couldn't win the award. Czech Republic and Juventus midfielder Pavel Nedved was the 2003 Ballon d'Or winner by a considerable margin. Before Ronaldo and Messi, raking in 66 goals and assists in a calendar was a feat rarely heard of, and when French and Arsenal striker Thierry Henry achieved it in 2003, there was a public consensus that he was a shoe-in for the award. When the winners were announced, it was a shock to many seeing Nedved win the award. Paolo Maldini, considered by many the second favorite, finished third. Henry finished second. Maybe it was down to the fact that the Czech Republic football team went on a two-year unbeaten streak, and Juventus won the Serie A, Italian League Cup, and were losing Champions League finalists on penalties that pipped Ned Ved as the voters' favorite. Arsenal not winning the Premier League and only making it to the second UCL group stage may have dented Henry's chances. But it is no doubt that Henry, and if not him, then Maldini were deserving of the award as well. Andriy Shevchenko, the Ukrainian striker for AC Milan, won the Ballon d'Or in 2004. In 2004, he was awarded the Capo Cannonieri, Serie A's top goal scorer, as AC Milan won the league crown in addition to the UEFA Super Cup. Shevchenko's Milan, however, struggled in the Champions League, losing to Deportivo La Coruna after leading four, one after the first leg, and failed to capture either the League Cup or the Intercontinental Cup. In the early 2000s, many regarded Shevchenko as the finest striker, alongside Brazil's Ronaldo. Shevchenko was a superb finisher. A large portion of the public believed the Ballon d'Or that year should have gone to Porto's Portuguese attacking playmaker Deco, whose exploits from the number 10 position saw Porto lift four trophies, including the Portuguese League, and more importantly, a historic second Champions League title. Deco had an eye-watering 29 assists in all competitions in 2003-04 and started the 2004-05 season brilliantly at his new club Barcelona. The big club bias and the bias towards center forwards over midfielders in the awards voting was a telling factor behind one of the best assist-laden seasons in Europe going unappreciated. The voting patterns slightly favored club trophies as a criteria over direct individual contributions during that time, but Deco's four trophy haul was only enough to see him second in the awards results. Juventus's and Real Madrid's Italian center back won the 2006 Ballon d'Or. He had a stellar year for his clubs and country, winning the World Cup with Italy and the Serie A with Juventus. 2006 was the first time a defender had won the award, and if it was to ever happen, that was the year. Italy's defense in the World Cup and Juventus's defense in Serie A had captivated the world. 
Fabio Cannavaro, and his Italian and Juventus teammate, Gianluigi Buffon, had conceded just one goal in the entirety of the 2006 FIFA World Cup, and just 24 goals in the 2005-06 Serie A, winning it with just one defeat. Many considered Buffon as an equally if not more deserving winner, pointing to the fact that such a masterful and dominant goalkeeping display hadn't been seen in decades, if ever. This dilemma was displayed in the voting, with Cannavaro and Buffon finishing just three votes within each other. 2006 remains the only year a defender has won the award, and while people use this to prove that Ballon d'Or isn't outright biased against defenders, it raises the question, what more does a goalkeeper have to do to win it? Barcelona and Argentine forward Lionel Messi won his second consecutive Ballon d'Or in 2010. There was no doubt that he deserved it. Messi had taken the world by storm in the last few years. He was widely regarded as the best player in the world already. But the public consensus was that at least one of three other midfielders, Messi's teammates Xavi Hernandez, Andres Iniesta and Inter Milan midfielder Wesley Snyder deserved the award for their immense contribution for club and country. While Xavi and Iniesta won the same trophies at Barcelona as Messi, they had won the World Cup in 2010, playing a major role in the Spanish team's midfield. Snyder, on the other hand, had a leading role in Inter Milan's unprecedented treble in 2010 and was the talisman in the Netherlands team that made the FIFA World Cup final in 2010. Snyder didn't even make top three in the end for the award, but was within 2% of votes to Xavi and Iniesta, who finished second and third. Snyder's exclusion from even the podium for the award is remembered as one of the biggest Ballon d'Or injustices ever. Real Madrid's Portuguese winger Cristiano Ronaldo won his second Ballon d'Or in 2013 after scoring 70-plus goals for club and country in 2013. By comparison, Ribéry and Messi, who finished second and third in the voting, had a combined tally of 64 goals. There was absolutely no doubt that Ronaldo deserved the award on individual merit, breaking records left, right, and center, and in the process winning every possible individual award in his way. The controversy arises when we consider that Ballon d'Or's voting patterns tilts towards team achievements more than strictly individual achievements. While that shouldn't be the case because the Ballon d'Or is an individual award, it seems that the voting patterns show double standards at times and show favoritism towards big names, not just here, but historically. French left winger Frank Ribéry had a career-defining season at Bayern Munich that year being their most important player in a historic treble. Cristiano, on the other hand, had no team trophies to show for 2012-13, finishing runner-up in the league and bowing out of the UCL in semi-finals. Ribéry had more impact than Cristiano on his team's performances, producing tangible results for them on the field. Ribéry called the 2013 Ballon d'Or results a robbery and blamed discordant support from the French public and bias in voting behind his loss. He did have a point, considering he finished behind Messi, who was out for four months due to injuries during the calendar year. Real Madrid and Croatian midfielder Luka Modric won the Ballon d'Or and the Golden Ball at the 2018 World Cup, where he was a losing finalist. Many believed this was undeserved, and instead, runner-up Cristiano Ronaldo deserved it scoring 43 goals and recording 12 assists in 46 games for his clubs. Modric was undoubtedly a pivotal part of the underdog Croatian team that made it to the World Cup final, and a major part of Madrid's 2018 Champions League winning team, but his statistics and tangible impact was highly underwhelming. Modric went on to win the Ballon d'Or by almost 270 votes, which is a very high margin. Maybe Portugal's underwhelming World Cup campaign was one of the reasons behind it. And taking nothing away from Modric, it becomes hard to argue that Ronaldo did not deserve the award after such a staggering individual and club season. This again flared up the age-old debate whether the award prefers team achievements and trophies over actual individual impact and contribution. Barcelona's Lionel Messi won his sixth Ballon d'Or in 2019. 
36 league goals and 12 Champions League goals in 2018-19 certainly means that he did deserve the award. But his alternative to the award, an eventual runner-up Virgil van Dijk had a better individual and arguably club season. Van Dijk guided Liverpool to a Champions League trophy in 2019 and helped them amass the third most points total in Premier League history, albeit finishing just a point behind City, by conceding just 22 goals and keeping 21 clean sheets, both statistics better than that of Cannavaro's 2005-06 Ballon d'Or winning season. Van Dijk captained Netherlands to a UEFA Nations League final in 2019, losing due to individual errors from his teammates, while Lionel Messi faltered once again on the Copa America stage. The most telling factor here is that Liverpool and Netherlands could not have done any of this without Van Dijk. Arguably, no other defender on the planet could have had such a quick and telling impact on a Liverpool side whose defensive issues had plagued them for a decade. It is an ode to his ability that many believe the world record 82. 5 mil euros transfer fee paid by Liverpool in December 2017 was a bargain. When the results were announced, it left many shocked. Van Dijk had just lost by one first preference vote. It was one of the closest voting results in Ballon d'Or history, and Jurgen Klopp and Italian great Franco Baresi made their feelings clear. Like the voting for the awards itself, this list from wanting a player to win the award over the other on the basis of team trophies, and in some cases, on the basis of individual showing and performances. Thus, it will be hypocritical on our part if we criticize the voting results of the award too much, since we ourselves face the same dilemmas as the voters did. But it is important to note that each case needs a subjective analysis rather than an objective one. Some players may contribute very little, yet feature in a trophy-rich season regularly and climb up their way on the award rankings. And at other times, players may perform extraordinarily well on the pitch at the highest level, but win no trophies and end up getting overlooked. It becomes important to find a balance and assess each case individually. But in this case, we would love to hear more from you. Should Neuer have won in it 2014? And should Robert Lewandowski be awarded the 2020 Ballon d'Or? Tell us your views in the comment and don't forget to subscribe.